in Zen they talk about having no images in your mind. All of these images that we've accumulated from the world builds this image in our mind or this notion we have of who we think we should be. So it's all externally driven. Isn't it ironic? It's all externally driven. It's not based on your pure nature, who you were before that. They talk about in Zen, they talk about who was your face before your parents were born? What is your original face before they were born? They talk about that to try and get back to that, who you are beyond this accumulation of life, accumulation of experience and images that we have in our mind that build this sense of a person. So the path of Zen, the path of Taoism, and path of Vedanta is to purge all of those images out of our mind, to, to get rid of that, to gain that power that resides in, our, in our, just our pure nature. There's a power there that resides in there. And actually, when we're not in resonance with that, we lose power because we're grasping an image that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. The image of yourself does not exist because we are shapeless. So this image you have in your mind that you've solidified in your mind is an illusion. It's an abstraction. It doesn't really exist. It's eclipsing who you truly are. And that's why you're powerless. You have no power. You don't trust. You're not humble. You're out there. You're a go-getter. You're out trying to conquer the world. This is counterintuitive to the spiritual experience. And that's something we all have to come to terms with. So if we don't learn how to trust and we don't come back into that original face before our parents were born, to use Zen terminology, then we'll never understand life itself. A lot of people are going around trying to understand the meaning of life. There's no meaning to life. It's the meaning we give it. But we could say, on the other hand, the true meaning of life would be to come back to that original face and to know who you truly are because the images you have of yourself will never be who you truly are. And this is why we continually suffer because we're trying to propagate uh, an image, trying to project this image that doesn't really exist. And then we become a hostage to that, a slave to that image. Oh, but, but that's what they think of me. I can't fall out of accord with that. What will my friends think? What will my parents think? To hell with that. You've got to get rid of all of those ideas because you'll be a hostage to your own image and to other people constantly. Yeah, you become powerless. Powerless. You give your power away to other people and you somewhat supporting that uh, image. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And the power of humility is to let go of that image and to just trust from your pure place, from your original face before your parents were born, to trust from that place and just to let life be as it will. Does that mean you will be as wealthy as Jeff Bezos? Probably not. No one's probably going to be that wealthy. Does it mean you'll be as famous as The Rock? Probably not. But does any of that matter? That's what we need to understand. Does any of that matter? Because even if using those two individuals, they themselves have an image of themselves as well, if we're going to be blunt about it. Because we all do have a projection of who we think we should be. And sometimes famous and wealthy people are, suffer from that the most because they are in the limelight and they are at the forefront of people, so they have to behave a certain way. Whereas everyone listening and watching this are probably not in that position and they, can, they have a far greater chance of understanding their pure nature. Yeah, that's a, actually a big misunderstanding that we all have, that all these um, successful people, we think, because they seem to be in, up in the cloud, mm. so that they, they don't, they surely don't have dramas like I do, because they're rich and mm. so on. But yeah, like you said, that they themselves might suffer from the same thing. And th this is another thing in this world and live as a human being nothing really happens outside human dramas mm. meaning that we suffer from the same thing as someone else has suffered the same thing so that we don't have to put big expectation or admiration of, of someone else's life just look at what happens when you stop watching youtube or you stop watching tv or you stop taking notice of the news you become completely comfortable with who you just are mm. Isn't it funny? When, you know, we, you and I, we speak to a lot of people and deal with a lot of people involved in what I'm talking about and stuff. And 
they're often conflicted with this image and, and so forth and so on. But they always are watching TV and keeping up with the news and, and what you and I know from being on lengthy sadhanas and so forth and so on is that when you're away from all that, you don't even think about that. You don't even think about it. Because you, you, you start to become perfectly comfortable with your true nature. Naturally, you become humble. Naturally, you trust. Because you don't have external stimuli confusing your reality. You don't have gossip magazines telling you how you should be. You don't have fitness magazines saying you should have these muscles or you should look a certain way. You don't have any of that. It's taken all away. And then you become perfectly comfortable with who you are. And that's the greatest threat to anyone. When someone's completely comfortable with who they are, no matter how they look or you know what their view of life is. Because we're all out there trying to be other people, which is ridiculous. Yeah, it's a, a tremendous amount of power you get to have it back yeah. for yourself. And, and it doesn't take that long. Yeah. How many times you and I have been on Sardin or places like Tiruvannamalai, Bodhgaya, up in Nepal? After a week, you're, you're perfectly fine. I mean, all of the things you experienced in whatever, wherever we were or the trials and tribulations we may have had, you don't even think about it after a week's finished you don't get interested in it anymore because it's not relevant anymore. Just because we pay attention to it, we give so much energy away to those external things. That's how we think it's important, right? But actually, it's not. Well, we could take anyone listening, right? Anyone. Anyone in the world, actually, we could take right now. We'll go to Tiruvannamalai. We're spending six months. After one week, they start to come back to reality. Because they're not looking at Instagram, they're not looking at Facebook, they're not watching YouTube, they're not keeping up with the news. So they're not comparing their life to someone else's life and to a perspective of how their life should be. You take it all away. Why do we, you and I, have such great experiences with Indians in rural India? Because they themselves don't have that either. Why are they so heartfelt, compassionate, those people, and so open to just give you a meal and they don't even know you? Because they come from that place. They have a deeper understanding of reality than all of us who are wound up in this new way of life with this digital world and so forth and so on. You take it all away, you come back to reality, and then you you reside in that true humble place. And that's where the power resides. How many times have we been in Tiru and our neighbours are going, oh, you guys are glowing. <laughs> but it's just because we've been there for a long time and we don't have internet we don't have what have you you know we don't have obviously we don't have television we still don't have television but we don't have any of these things that confuse or distract us from who we truly are and so you're constantly just always residing in that place and you're just experiencing life purely without having a projection of how life should be or how you should appear to other people I mean, Instagram is one of the big ones these days, right? Instagram, people are looking at images, literally. It's a, it's a place okay. of images mm. where people are looking and comparing their life. Oh, look at, you know, her dress or look at that guy's muscles. And they're comparing themselves to that. And then they look at the amount of likes. They look at vanity metrics. This is vanity metrics, right? You're looking at likes, subscribers and so forth and so on. And you're comparing yourself to that. It's a massive mistake. Massive mistake. Because... You yourself are perfect, who you truly are. But you're trying to create this image for yourself, which doesn't exist. And it never will exist. When you're going to die, that image is gone. Your body is gone too. <laughs> I mean, it's, go it's going to be food for worms. So you've got to understand reality quick smart. Because life, in a sense, has a way of disappearing. You're 41 day, next week you're 70. You're like, Jesus Christ, like, what happened to the time? Yeah, so in reality, none of that images and whatnot is that important. Not important at all. It's not important. If it doesn't exist, it can't be important. Yes. That's like saying unicorns are important. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> A unicorn don't exist. And you're, just, you're sitting around going, man, unicorns are so important, you know, to the to the cultivation of <laughs> agriculture and stuff like that and you're like oh wow this guy he ought to be in he better go to mental asylum now. Mm. you know yeah I mean it's uh, yeah it's laughable it's laughable yeah. yeah so put that in perspective none of that's really important not important 
what's important is a spiritual process is the way of purging that ego purging that image and coming back into your true nature mm. you know you come back into your true nature that's that's the great boon yeah. of existence mm. coming into contact with that shapelessness that you were talking about and moving through life and being shapeless and allowing life to use you how it how it needs to use you and that power that you will become one with that source of energy yes mm -hmm. the Tao Brahman whatever you want to call it and then then you become that like as Alan Watts said that aperture for the universe to express itself so it's just why your subjective experiences here will become self-evident because the universe is using you in whichever way it is maybe it's making microphones playing music making tea the chai wala. maybe this is your virtue to use dharma in the sense of virtue or, or duh this is your virtue in life that's how the Tao can use you or how Brahman can use you but it can't use you when you are solidifying an image it's, it's kind of ironic because that, sli that solid image blocks that flow of energy to move through and you can't do anything not that you can't do anything you can go out and do anything sure. you can sweep the floor and you can do things but you won't achieve anything in a magnitude that can happen when the Tao makes use of you because once that power is is your power you don't really exist in a, in, in a certain degree then you can move mountains not literally but figuratively you know you can you can move mountains we all have that potential but it's ironic because we're putting all of our energy and all of our focus in the image because that's what education teaches you that's what your parents teach you that's what your friends try to keep you in that box they're trying to keep you in that box because it makes sense to them because they themselves have an image that they're trying to protect as well. But you need to go beyond all images. You need to go beyond all concepts, all sense of solidity to come shapeless again. And to move with that river effortlessly.